Hello, 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 everyone. Just wanted to welcome you guys to what is going to end up being a midseason review, uh, something where we go through all of the games played thus far, how we did in them, uh, with some highlights from each of those games, as well as the kind of like roster update where we sit, what we look like, how we're playing, why we're playing, who we're playing. Um, some conversation in regards to Ryan Berger and Joey Aguilar that will lead into um, the decisions that we make for the next game, which is the SMU game. Um, we also go over and review our recruiting um, and kind of go over the signings that we've made thus far, as well as hopes and goals for the remainder of the season and the other recruits that we look forward to signing. Enjoy the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, hopefully uh, you all enjoy everything and look forward to finishing out the season strong. Please enjoy. All right, we are looking at game eight, week 10. Season is starting to kind of come to a close so far this year. We have not done as well as I thought we might. Oh, we're kind of in line. It's not super far off, but you know we're, we haven't been able to string together a whole bunch of wins. Haven't gotten three in a row wins, which is kind of a bummer. Started out pretty hot playing Minnesota, uh, beating them 31-24 at home. Traveled to Washington State to Pullman, Washington. Beat the Washington State Cougars. It looks like that was less of a... Um, upset than we thought. They're really not doing well this year. Um, traveled to Louisville, got spanked. Uh, they kind of just had our number and beat us pretty handily. And next week we traveled, I believe, down to Central Florida to play the Golden Knights. They beat us. Sorry, we beat them. Top 25 beat uh, 30 to 24. They're actually eight, seven and one in the eight games they played. We were the only loss that they have. Still ranked top 25. So. When you look at how we played, we could have been closer up there. And then we had a, a pretty big loss to Fresno State. Traveled out to Fresno State. Kind of got smacked around a little bit. I just couldn't stop them. Uh, our, our, our team this year, and I'll, I'll do a quick rundown of the team just to give everybody an update. But it's not the greatest team ever. Kind of overperforming, but also underperforming. Like, no one's really good. It's, weird. it's a weird situation. Then we went to... Your favorite and our favorite newest uh, FBS school, the the last real new school to be added to NCAA 14, Old Dominion. We beat them 31 to 24. Big win for us there to get us back on the winning ways. Played a home game there against Cincinnati, and they just barely beat us at the end, which was kind of devastating. We played super good defensively the whole game. I was down. Uh, three touchdowns like if we go look at this if we look at the game summary I scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to bring it close and then they um, it was like third and long and they got within uh, field goal range and kicked a field goal in the last second to win um, yeah you can see they they just had a good drive we weren't playing very well um, you can you can see turnovers weren't that bad they just the turnovers they had, I think they had a touchdown off of a interception or a fumble or something like that. And then it, it was just a, kind of a weird game. Yeah, so this was kind of a bummer when it came to actually getting the wins. Our quarterback, um, our quarterback situation has been kind of weird the whole game. Uh, our starting quarterback got injured in the first little bit of... Um, in the first little bit of the first game and I played with the backup for a little while I may actually go in and uh, use the the backup and the time that he was on the field he or the time that he was playing his completions were better he's definitely a faster quarterback but Joey Aguilar is like hot right now but he's got a ton of interceptions 12 interceptions on the year not great I just haven't been happy with him he's super slow our running game has been pretty anemic. Um, you know, Ryan Berger, 130, 185 yards on 35 attempts, like doing a lot better even than our running backs. So what I may do is I I know that I know that uh, today, Junior. You know, if you look at the quarterback like skills and stuff like that, let's see here. So he's this is this is the backup quarterback that was playing. He's 85 overall, sorry, 73 overall, 
85 acceleration, 80, 85 agility. His throw power is kind of high. His his accuracy is low, uh, 76. But I mean, if you look at him compared to um, Joey Aguilar, you know Joey Aguilar is a 76 overall. His awareness isn't super great. Like let's, I mean, it's better than Ryan Berger's, but like, where'd it go? So 82 acceleration, 82 agility. When did he get faster? So he just got weak throw power. They're not as far off as I thought. Maybe I'm just being bad. Oh, his speed is the thing. So his speed is just super bad. Okay, so Ryan Berger's like a 74 speed. Okay. All right, well, I'll give him another chance. I mean, he's not doing good. I'll give him the first quarter. And if he's not playing well, I'll I'll probably take him out. Running back wise, there's not much to say there. Um, our wide receivers have actually been great. Uh, tons of tons of just big receptions, um, clutch receptions there. But the biggest issue with them, you know, tons of yards after catch, which is great. Tons of drops though. Um, the where's the tight end? The tight end Wilson has dropped a ton. Davis has dropped up like four. It just drops all around, and I don't love that. So we kind of need to get back into like winning ways with that. Defensively, our team has looked okay. Um, we've had a you know a lot of weird success, like lots of interceptions in in one game. So like uh, Favors, Jordan Favors has done really well as a strong safety. Got two interceptions in one game. Uh, Ethan Johnson is our uh, sophomore cornerback. I'm excited to watch him grow over the next couple of years. Um, and then I believe, yeah, on, on his interception, he ran all the way back. Tyrek uh, Fundeberg. What a fun name. He's a senior, so we're going to be graduating a lot of really good players, you know, that are supposed to be good. But luckily, we have a good amount of depth for this. Um, yeah, just, it's been a weird, weird season. Um, we're not getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I've switched up defenses a couple times and I've changed up the offensive playbook. I like the offensive playbook I'm using the, um, Appalachian state. It's like a pro style. Um, I may go through and create my own playbook to add a few more pistol formations and, uh, shotgun formations, um, as we go along. Uh, but yeah, it's just been been kind of iffy one kick return it was pretty good H had a comeback with that i mean just the team is not looking great uh in my opinion but you know as far as wide receivers go middle of the road there are tackles we have the, the the number one and number three tackle leaders in all of college football sack leaders we're doing okay about half as many as the, the people who have the most um you know decent amount of interceptions uh only two off the lead on that and then uh the big thing that i think would be good to to look at would be the championship contenders kind of give us an idea of where we are uh, but yeah so like this year we're 41st overall in the nation with growth like obviously it looks a little bit lower um next year because we're going to be losing players and it looks like our recruiting class hasn't filled that uh, void quite so much but we're hopefully going to pick up um a, some more recruits we're waiting on maverick jet so we can go and take a look at the uh recruiting here um a little bit of a mid-season update but yeah we've we've signed five players already we can look at um we've signed a free safety um curtis barnes he seems to be really good he is juco which means he's not necessarily the best uh when it comes to the star rating but his overall is going to be higher because he's had more time to develop um and i believe he's a junior where do i see that matt lehrer is a decent defensive tackle for like depth he's not going to be the best what's up crelly yeah lehrer's like a he's going to be a depth guy um I, I i'm not loving our team in regards to that but uh depth should come along um, Alex Ferguson is a great uh, outside linebacker that we picked up. He's also Juco. I heavily recruit Juco because they just build the quality of your team so that you can perform where you need to to get the real good recruits. Um, and you can see, like, he's fast. He's a big coverage guy, uh, which I love in an outside linebacker. Like, even if we do, like, a two-linebacker set, I can put him in and uh, play him in that position. 
uh, you see he's not necessarily going to be a power guy, but he's still strong and he still has great play recognition and tackles uh, that allows him to, to, to do pretty well there. Um, Drew Booth, uh, another defensive tackle, just another depth guy. He's, I believe, a little bit faster. Yeah, he's faster than uh, Matt Lehrer. Um, and he just has better overall of the finesse slash skill move stuff to make him more useful on the line for me in case someone gets hurt or he develops over time. Uh, the last one uh, that I'm going to look at is Anthony Pickens. Uh, when we signed him, uh, it showed him as a wide receiver, uh, which kind of fits in line with his his catching, his speed, um, his ability to like catch in traffic. It's not great, um, but he looks like he'd be a good fast you know number three wide receiver or potentially even a slot guy because his route running is as good as it is as a freshman um but then ultimately he could potentially be um he could be a corner he's got good man coverage good play recognition so he could do he could do okay the biggest targets that we're looking at right now that i would really really love to sign be jet maverick he's um the, the the prospect that we created so i'm going to do one creative prospect this season jet maverick is the quarterback prospect that we absolutely want we we would love to have him be kind of like the leader of the team going into next season to help us get into where we can win more games perform better as a running team but also to have like the threat as a passer. Cause right now our quarterback can either run or he can throw an interception. And that's kind of it. Even though our wide receivers are performing well, our quarterbacks are not. Um, right now, Tennessee is leading. Um, I believe they've already had their visit. No, they have their, so neither of us have had our visits. My hope is that we can get that visit week 14 and uh not have them sign him immediately after the visit because sometimes teams do that uh, i would be devastated if he went and left uh us to go to tennessee um mike white is another big one uh that i would love to get he's just a really good offensive line prospect that we are surprisingly ahead on just good all around a little slow but he's a guard so he doesn't have to be super fast um mike smith uh, is a really really fast corner um, he's a I believe he's a coverage corner um, but I typically like hard hitters uh, in in coverage just because it's fun to just like pop people uh, back there David Joseph is just super fast he's gonna be a defensive player if you look at his stats he could be a quarterback as well but I'm gonna put him in in the defense as like a free safety um, or even as a corner because his man coverage is nutty um, so yeah, we've got some good, good recruits still left over. Um, you know, Charles Smith, Juco, we might get him from Reserve, Louisiana. And then Brent Hart, another offensive lineman. Uh, plus a few of these other folks down at the bottom that we're slowly but surely trying to get. Let's take a look at Dingle Prince. Um, he is a defensive, I think he's a right end. Yes. DeAndre Dingle Prince. He is my Dingle Prince. He is your Dingle Prince. He is the Dingle Prince of us all. Are his sacks? Yes, the sack leader for the team is the main man, DeAndre Dingle Prince. Uh, my Dingle Prince and your Dingle Prince. He can be uh, whoever's Dingle Prince wants him to be. But he's a pass rusher. He gets a lot of tackles off the line. Um, I'd like to see him get even more sacks and more strip fumbles. But I mean, he's looking really good. He's a little small, six foot, 280, um, but you know he's a, he's got a big pressure. Um, he's got big pressure on the line, and gets right now is the sack leader and gets a lot of sacks for the season. Um, you can see his uh, his skills overall 77. He's on fire right now, pretty quick. Um, not super fast. Uh, he's pretty quick. Uh, strength strong dude the biggest thing to me is his power move so he gets off the line and bullies offensive linemen i'd like to see him get a little bit better block shedding and finesse moves you can't control it so it's just kind of like a hope and a dream um top of the league we're top of the league we're leeds united we're top of the league leeds, 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 leeds. yeah this dude hits hard he's pretty great um but yeah Everybody, meet your new your new friend and mine, DeAndre Dingle Prince. 
So this week we are going to be playing the Southern Methodist University Mustangs. Uh, if you're familiar, they had a big time scandal in the um, in the '90s. I believe it was the Postal Express or Pony Excess. There's a there's a ESPN 30 for 30 called Pony Excess uh, that's really good and goes into like all the recruiting stuff that they were doing, like paying players and stuff, which is legal now. And but they were doing it before it was legal. Um, but we're heading um, we're heading on the road to face SMU. Um, it looks like we are the favorites here. They haven't had a great season so far. Um, they do have the better team on paper, uh, but uh, I think that just based on how we're playing, I think we can we can do pretty well. If you look at their schedule, they haven't really played anybody. I mean, AM is decent. Um, Temple is doing surprisingly well. They've won some crazy uh, games recently. Our schedule, you know, I'd like to get back into winning, beating beating SMU. I think we can finish this season with probably four wins. Houston is going to be tough, uh, but Coastal Carolina, I think we can beat. And then CLT, I can't for the life of me remember who that is. Is that the show? I don't remember. I'll check it later. Um, SMU looks like they have a pretty good passing game, so... I might get, you know, shredded here. I'm hoping I can get pressure on them uh, and win the game. We, I'm going to start with Joey Aguilar. He's quicker than I thought, but he just, he does not roll out of the pocket well, but he's just more consistent as a passer in regards to the, how far he can throw it. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll give him at least, at least the first quarter and kind of go from there. He had a bunch of interceptions two games ago and it is just not doing great. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the midseason update. So far, it's been a kind of bittersweet season. We've had some pretty cool come from behind victories. Uh, we have beat a top 25 team and we've looked, you know, good in some cases, bad in some cases. Uh, but we also had some pretty bad defeats. So over the next couple of games, we're going to definitely try and maintain that bowl bid, maintain over 500 to try and get to where we can go to a bowl game that's the big goal for this season thank y'all so much for tuning in again and cheering on the appalachian state mountaineers this should be a fun into the season be sure to tune in for the rest of those games um, i do stream on tuesdays and thursdays if you didn't know that and upload these videos on mondays and fridays thank y'all again so much if you enjoyed the content so far make sure you leave a like and if you'd like to see more in the future please subscribe to the channel. See ya!